everyone, welcome back to the Nintendo Prime Podcast. It has been a while. Yeah, that it has. Uh, as always, I am joined, or almost always, you're going to be gone for a couple weeks coming up, so if I do a podcast during that next week. Just a week? Yeah. yeah. Well, at the rate this podcast is coming out, you might not be gone for anything. <laughs> <laughs> Again, yeah. this gives me a chance to plug our Patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. For f- just $5 per month, you can get early access to this podcast, the full audio version, not segmented, on Sundays, a day before we start releasing the video version. Uh, what's also cool about it is if we ever get to $100 per month total on Patreon, that is the goal to ensure this podcast happens every single week. Because guess what? It's been three weeks. It has. So that's just <laughs> the way... Like I. I, you guys, you know, if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll know that I, I do daily video content or almost daily video content, sometimes multiple videos a day. Uh, you also know that you might not know if you follow YouTube, but if you hear this on the website, I have a website that I run news. I got a Facebook page now where I'm trying to get 24 images a day out. Wait, you so do. yes, <laughs> wow, that's yeah. news to me. Uh, Facebook.com slash Nintendo Prime up to 61,000 at the time of recording this. Hopefully, 63, 64 by the time you hear this. I've been going pretty good over there, but uh. So I, I'm doing a lot. I'm kind of spread thin. So in my order of priorities, finding time when I'm a father of three to be like, hey, let's uh, let's make sure this podcast happens every Thursday night when usually I have to work and do other stuff at the site every Thursday night. But if the but the thing is, if we get to that monetary goal, it's not just like it's not like I'm saying I want money to like ensure this is going to happen. But what it does is it convinces me that there's enough people that care to have this happen. Mm-hmm. Um, because I will admit, uh, while we've had some podcast episodes, e- even 5J noted uh, that in the last podcast we had up, we had a couple of parts of that that did pretty good. Um, yeah. But that's not normal. If you actually look at the history of our podcast, we're usually getting 500 to 700 views, which isn't terrible. But when you compare that to other videos I make doing, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20,000, it's kind of like, well, this is a lot, a big time consuming thing. Uh, that doesn't seem like a majority of our audience cares about. Now, I care about this a lot because this channel is primarily, like, I'm, especially on YouTube, it's basically just me all the time. So I like having like, Eric here at 5J, you know, yeah. Game Over Jesse when you can come, or, you know, HMK or any other guests we get because it leads to more conversations and more thoughts than just mine. And there's people that disagree with me. Like, I, the last podcast when uh, I, I was saying bad things about the Metro 2 remake. I was quick to get shot down on that one. <laughs> hey, not going to let that. Um, and again, if there was no other opinions there, it would have never happened. It would have happened in the comment section, but well, it's the comment section. Life moves on. Yeah, nobody reads those. <laughs> no one reads that, except for me. Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah. getting, I'm really bad about reading comment sections. i got to stop doing it. Uh, I end up wasting like an hour of my day just reading and responding to comments, which I'm sure a lot of you guys appreciate, but uh, yeah, it say, also I takes away from content creation. When you're so. active with that. Yeah, like, I I like having a a community, because, like, here's the thing. The number one reason I really love this podcast is I like creating a conversation. Um, I, my channel, the YouTube, the Nintendo Prime thing, yeah, we report news, we do all this stuff, we have editorials and opinions, but I'm all about the conversation. Like, it's not just what I feel, I want to know what other people feel. But if they disagree with me, that's fine. There's plenty of people that disagreed on a recent video I did uh, about what our first topic's going to be, which is the voice chat stuff. Um, And... There's a lot of people that said, oh, I overreacted, I over that. And we'll get into that here in this topic about my feelings on that, your guys' feelings on that. Um, but uh, it's nice hearing that, you know, the other side of the coin, the, the people that don't think things are such a big deal as I do. Or the people that think that apparently I'm doing it for the hit, the views for some reason. Um, that that, 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 I, that apparently I can't be passionate unless it's for views. That's, <laughs> that's weird to me. Um, but anyways, as always, I have Mr. Eric Moore with me. And joined by 5J Gaming yet again. What's up? Quickly becoming a regular. (laughs) Hey, that's the plan. (laughs) No, no, we love having you. No, it's good. Yeah, you have have some, you have different opinions than I do, so I like having you. (laughs) You're wrong on everything. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so let's just get. I was going to say, this is Fox News where we agree on everything all the time. But I'm Donald Trump. Yeah, fake news. Fake news. You guys are fake news on the real deal. Right, right. Um, (laughs) No, so this first topic is something obviously I've talked passionately about on the channel. I just brought up the video I did about it. Um, The voice chat situation on Nintendo Switch. Now, the app has launched at the time we're recording this. 
Uh, I don't ha just have any of us do any of us own a copy of Splatoon 2 right now? No. No. Okay. We have an early copy, so. What? Tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. So, so we recorded this on Thursday. So we're recording this literally like hours before the game comes out. Uh, so we personally have not gotten to test out the app at this point. So this is just full disclosure in case things change between now and the time you hear this. We're basing this on what we have seen and what we know now, not what has happened since now. You know, if there's patches and updates to it, you know, by the time you hear this episode. Um, just for full clarity, but here's what we know. Uh, you can download the app right now on iOS or Android. Uh, it's, you can't really find it if you search for it, so you kind of kind of find a link to it online. Um, that's probably going to change when the game launches here in a few hours because that's when Nintendo's going to want it to be available in searches. Uh, it it might have a home page thing on like yeah the store maybe it'll it'll probably be front page for a little bit anyways. So I'm thinking. Uh, so they the app is needed to have voice chat. That's the big thing with the app is that it is the only way to voice chat at least officially voice chat uh, with your friends. On Nintendo Switch. Obviously, there's always been third party options. You've always been able to use Discord and Skype and Google Voice and any, like, you can always do that. I can call Eric up on the phone yeah. through Verizon and, you know, whatever. We'll just talk through Verizon to each other. It doesn't cost us anything, unlimited talk. Yeah. But uh, that's obviously never been the ideal way to communicate with games because people have friends list, as an example. Uh, on like Switch, you can see what games your friends are playing. And like that's stuff I can't necessarily do very well on Discord because Discord can't track anything on Switch right now. Um, yeah. So like, there's not an easy way to do it outside of Nintendo. So right now, you essentially only one game supports it. Uh, we assume there's going to be updates for future games, potentially Arms and uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe could eventually get added to the service. But right now, it's just supporting Splatoon 2. And it's like an app within an app, if it makes sense. So they have the Nintendo Switch online app is what it's called. And then within that app, after you connect your Nintendo account, it has like mini apps for each game. And right now, obviously, Splatoon 2 is the only one, so you have Splatnet 2. And when Splatnet 2, so what's interesting about that is that this is just how Splatnet 2 works. It doesn't necessarily mean this is how it's going to work for every game. So that's yeah. something to, to keep in mind. Right, right. Um, Another... A question I have is, is it going to be only Nintendo uh, games that are going to be able to use this app? I assume... You know, can a little indie studio that has a multiplayer racer, you know, be able to put an app in there? Yeah, I assume <laughs> that... It, and this is the weird thing about it. Like, I assume that Nintendo is going to let their, like, AAA third parties be able to use it. Um, especially for games, you know, if Call of Duty ever comes to the platform, like, mm -hmm. obviously they're going to want voice chat. And Nintendo's not going to be like, no, you can't do that. Um, Money does talk. So, yeah. Uh, you know, in terms of letting indies and stuff do it, uh, I, I have no idea if that's like Nintendo charges for it or if they just let them do it for free using Nintendo servers. Uh, I, I have no clue. Because yeah. Nintendo isn't telling us. Basically, we don't know a lot officially about the app um, and about how online functionality is going to work beyond well, how it works in Splatoon 2. Um, and that's really crazy. Uh, I know some people will say it's a beta, it's beta, it's beta. That that that's fine. Uh, Nintendo's not calling it a beta. No, <laughs> and why would they? Um, Nintendo, like everyone, you can act like it's a beta because we're not paying for it yet. Uh, and that, I I guess you can consider that legit. But I mean, then people are telling me, yeah, but you're not really paying for voice chat. You're also getting online servers. Well, guess what? We already have those now. Uh, and you're also getting uh, the game, you know, you're getting that, that free NES game, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, okay, so your argument then is that you are getting other free stuff, so it's not about the app. So then the app really isn't beta, this is what the app is. Um, now, this is getting ahead of ourselves, because obviously I have some strong opinions on this. Um, <laughs> so essentially, you access the, the, the Splatnet thing through here. You're able to create a lobby in Splatoon 2 that kind of shoots over. Once you create the lobby, it shoots over to your phone uh, where you can have your buddies come in. And before you even start a match, you can just sit in a lobby forever um, in game and just chat with your friends. You don't ever even need to start a game. Uh, but once you start a game, uh, it'll split you off. You know, if you're on different teams, it'll split you off. You know, like games, you can only chat with your teammates and then bring you back in. Um, and the, this is all fine. Like that that's I mean, outside of the fact that I think all of us would prefer to have it natively on the console 
whatever, that's fine. The, the, how the app handles that seems fine. Um, What's interesting about that to me is that unlike other voice chat platforms where it's just, hey, here's a voice channel and it just happens all the time, this seems to be intimately connected to what's happening in the game at the time. So while you're, when you have your uh, phone open and while you're playing your game, you must be sending data to Nintendo on your account that, hey, I'm now in this room with these other people. And yeah. then it sends it to your phone. I mean, wow, it's, <laughs> that's a pretty active connection to the voice chat. And it really is. They can do yeah. something cool with it. So the red flags start popping up uh, with the voice chat part specifically. Because there's other things the app does. Uh, that we haven't touched on much. Like you can track your stats. Uh, your friends can look at your stats. They can look at replays of your, like your best match from that day. Um, cool. Like 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 there's some the, like all oh, that stuff's fine. Like that's what a companion app usually is. Like it gives you additional yeah. information about your gameplay sessions that you can't typically get through your console because, for whatever reason. Um, you know maybe it's right. just because right. they don't want to overcomplicate the menu in Splatoon two. Uh, by having all this extra tracking stuff. But hey, on an app, you know, right at your fingertips, you can track it when you're not even at home. Um, that's fine. Like, that companion app stuff is fine. I have no complaints about that. Like, that, it's 2017. Like, Nintendo needs something like this. The competition has it. Yeah. I mean, it, it's time to catch up. So that's that's fine. I, I don't care about the companion app stuff because they did that right so far with Splatoon 2. Yeah. But the voice chat stuff... And because this is the only way you can voice chat, and because technically they will be charging for this next year, for you to have access to even do this. Um, there's a lot of issues that are cropping up now that they better damn well fix before they start charging. Uh, put it this way, I don't even know a better way to say this. To properly voice chat in Splatoon 2, the app must hijack your phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you literally cannot do anything else on your phone but have that app open. If you yeah. and on, if you yeah. swipe your notification menu from like on my on iPhone, I swipe it from the top. It kicks me out of voice chat. If yeah. I uh, ha get a text message and tap on that notification to quickly reply to someone, I am kicked out of voice chat. If my phone goes into idle mode and turns off the screen, it kicks you out of voice chat. It's ridiculous. Uh, now, yep. obviously, some people said, "Oh, it doesn't really kick you out." And I think that's because the other players still see that you're in the lobby. This almost makes it worse. So the other players still see that you are in the lobby, yeah. but they don't know that you can't hear them. Right. Oh, yeah, that's awful. Um, and that, and, and I know someone said that that some maybe they can hear you, but you, but uh, that it's possible they can hear you, but you can't hear them. Either way, there's no communication there that informs anyone that that's happening. Yeah, it almost like it goes into um, standby mode. Yeah, it, it's like a bug or something. I don't know. It's like someone didn't think no, this I think through. It's, I think it's just what they've designed it on. I think it's the. Yeah. I can't remember what I read the one article, and uh, I can't remember what it was built on, but I think it has to something to do with the way it was built. Yeah. That it it it's not really a bug. It's just the platform it was built with which that's dumb right yeah that's called bad design oh it is. that's so what makes you actually scared that they can't fix this stuff maybe because like, i saw some people say that like better. ios has like this thing with ios where they don't allow multiple apps and, and you see this like on my iphone when i whenever i switch between apps they usually go into this like idle sleep mode thing where they're not really running they're just kind of loaded in the ram and they just sit there um and yeah, computers do this all the time app. like this is how pcs handle a lot of things um, they pause a lot of apps when you have them minimized. Um, but it, um, th there are apps that, were, that work around this. Like Discord, you could still chat with people while you're using other apps. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Skype, you could still do that. The only thing that really gets interrupted is like a voice call. Or, or not a voice call, sorry, uh, a video call. Obviously, if you use another app, the video call doesn't really work. Um, and even then, if you use uh, the local thing on an iOS device, their FaceTime, uh, if you're in a video call and you go to another app, you're still chatting. They just can't see you anymore. Mm -hmm. So, like, it doesn't stop you from chatting with someone. Uh, and that's what's so weird about in 2017. And by the way, Android doesn't have any restrictions for multitasking for different apps. So it's not even an really? issue with Android. It's iOS specifically. And I did to release that. an app in 2017 that is has voice chat as a primary function but 
cannot work on your phone unless it is the only thing running and on your screen at all times draining your battery there was a, a 15 minute video done by game explain and one of the guys in there had their battery drained 45 percent in 15 minutes oh what holy crap 45 percent playing on max and 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 he said in the video it is the only app he has running oh yeah and you also can't have power save mode on either oh you can't have that on nope. either oh my god see yeah at least that they, I'm, I'm fairly certain on that one yeah and to make matters worse and this is where some people have been contending with me uh on the, the video i made about it is on the support site it, it says that that the app cannot stream audio from the switch that basically means that that little splatoon 2 headset we saw before with the dongle is basically how they expect you to get game audio and voice through the same headset yep um and yes i know there's workarounds for it yes i know some people just like putting a, an earbud in one ear or having those headsets that have one thing on one ear and then you listen to the game audio from the tv and that's fine i'm glad that that works i'm glad that is an option for people who like it that way but i'm not one of those people uh, yeah, basically, you... it's just like a splitter, and uh, I think then if logic uh, uh, holds up here, I think then this means that you could also just be using Discord and then get your game audio through that same splitter, um, and it'll work, it'll work the same way as the Nintendo app does, but better because it's Discord. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just it's a really strange. Um, and the thing is, is, is I don't. So you want to play your game that way, that's fine. But like, I've been PC gaming a long time, getting my game audio and my voice chat through the same headset on my PC. And I, now I do it on Xbox One and PlayStation Four because they. The thing is, those systems might default. Like Xbox One comes with just a one ear headset, like by default. But it, the thing is, is that's just an option. You could still do it the way that I want to do it. Uh, and I know some people say, well, you know, why complain about it? Because you could do this on every other gaming platform but Nintendo. And those other gaming platforms charge for it. And now Nintendo's going to charge for it. Yes, they're charging significantly less, but they're not necessarily providing as much value anyways. Um, and they don't have the track record to back it up. So, I... <laughs> I, you know, I, I've, I've talked a lot so far. You know, what do you guys think about what the heck Nintendo is doing with this app and this online infrastructure just right now with Splatoon 2? Go ahead, 5J. I'm trying to see if I can find the one article. 5J, did you die? I think his audio cut out again. <laughs> He's checking settings or something. <laughs> so I guess we'll just keep that conversation rolling. Yeah, Um. so... I, I know I texted you the one to, the one thing um, that uh, hopefully it's we're mess, not... It's messaging me on Discord. Oh, nice. <laughs> that I can't see from you. Yeah, great. Oh, this is fun. Um, so I hope I'm not talking over him. But uh, I know I text messaged you that, um, you know, you hit... Nintendo, you hit a home run with the, with the Switch, and then you come out and you completely flop on this. Nope. Keep on going. I'm just checking... Yeah. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah. I was just coming to check you. Have fun editing this, by the way, man. <laughs> this section's going to be all messed up. I can still hear the whole time, so I didn't talk about it anymore. No, it, okay. It, it's, it's okay. All right. So, 5J, what do you think about the online app situation? Yeah, uh, what, what I was saying earlier when uh, we were having those audio problems is... Um, it's still it rings of the sort of what's been happening of uh, the whole lifetime of the switch so far it just feels like they are rushing 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 to put this thing out and and uh, things just aren't complete yet and uh it's not up to snuff yet but at the same time uh you know there's so much good content out there that it's it's not really a deterrent yet but it is frustrating to get bad news after bad news after bad news and the app, like you said, yeah, cool companion app, maybe. I mean, I haven't used it as a companion app yet because I don't have any <laughs> game yet that right. works with it. So in theory, it sounds like a good companion app, but we'll see. Yeah. And then the voice chat, obviously, everyone's you know talked that to death. It's a bad uh, physical hookup, and it's a bad um, software um, experience. So it's, it's not great. I'm glad they're doing it, but I really hope that it's upgradable 
and this is uh, version 0.1, and one day we'll get version 1.0 that we should have got now. Yeah, it's, uh, see, a lot of the complaints I have, it's stuff that I don't, I don't necessarily think it's unfixable, uh, right. but it's the fact that they launched it in this state in the first place that I kind of take an issue with. Because as much as people want to tell me it's a beta, and I'm sure Nintendo internally views it as a bit of a beta since it's for free before their paid service launches and they say it has limited functionality, whatever that's supposed to mean, because they still aren't telling us what that functionality is supposed to be. Um, I assume it's things like being able to message your friends. That's a feature that's missing right now. Yeah. Uh, being able to voice chat one-on-one -on -one outside of games. Being able to voice chat with people who are in other games. So you guys are like, I can play Breath of the Wild, and you could play Fast Racing RMX, and we could still talk to each other. That would be cool. I have expected to be the, the Miiverse replacement, sort of a Nintendo social network. Yeah, maybe. I don't. I, I think Nintendo's given up on that. Um, maybe, just, but they put in a weird um, image posting thing. In, in, in Splatoon 2, yeah. I, and I think that's just because they like that art. Yeah. I think they just like that art thing. I, I think they think that fits with Splatoon a lot. Which it does. Yeah. Um, see, I really, that's the thing. I loved Miiverse. It was like, I, I wish they would have carried that over. So unique. Um, There's nothing like it. Yeah, I mean, I know Nintendo's trying to embrace Facebook and Twitter and stuff more, but um, they, didn't, you know, they still could have had Miiverse. But it, yeah, I, I think Nintendo can fix all this stuff, but then again, I don't know. Like Eric was just bringing up, it might just be how the specific thing is programmed. And it's like, well, if that's the case, they almost need to recreate the whole app to fix some of these problems. And Nintendo might not even view it as a problem. Yeah. I, right. I, I don't remember where exactly I read that, but... Yeah, see, the question is, does Nintendo actually view these things as issues? Do they view the fact that people don't want to run cords all the way across their living room to get audio from their Switch as a problem? I mean, do, do, uh, do they think that that's even an issue? Because as people say, oh, well, I could just put a single earbud in with a mic and, and just get my audio like I do on other platforms, but ignore the large consumer base that likes to have all their audio coming through high-quality headsets. There's mm -hmm. people who only play their games with headphones. Right, yeah. Um, another thing, I'm, I got one of the article, one article pulled up. Where's this from? Kotaku. Okay. Um, and, uh, one of the other fun things, apparently, uh, volume is not controlled through the app. How do you control the volume? Your phone. The volume of the mic? The, uh, would love to see more vo uh, controller voice, voice volume within the app than a single mute button. All volume functions are handled by the phone or the headset the player is using. But it worked well enough until they started playing. Because then you're so, monkeying with... So, you can't mute individual people, is what it sounds like. Yeah, you can only just like, mute yeah. them all. Yeah. You mute them all, it's or... Terrible. Yeah. These that's are, what it's sounding like. And these, these are that, coming from people that are that are using it. So, right. you know, and I've seen this app in action in several videos now. It, You can't mute individual people. I, I don't mind necessarily controlling the volume of, like, the overall, like, the, the master volume. That's fine. The volume of individual people, I would like to control. Because anyone knows in voice chat, sometimes you need to raise and lower people because it's going to depend how far away are they from their microphone, what kind of mic are they using. Uh, these are these are factors that I can't control what, how, what other people are doing, but I would like to control their volume on my end so I can get a better experience and actually hear what they're saying. Or right. have one person not drown out other people. As right, and, but the only the one problem I see with that is, is it, you're going to have to start if you don't like the volume during the game, either you're going to have to start monkeying with either your headset or you're going to have to press your volume buttons on your phone. That's a pain in the ass, too. Well, yeah, I, I don't necessarily view that as... The, the fact that I can't adjust the individual people or mute right. individual it's people, that bothers more, me. Yeah. That really, and I understand, like, oh, right now you can only really lobby with your friends. So I guess, you know, they, they, they're not concerned, oh, you would want to mute someone individually. <laughs> well, you might because what if someone's in there... And they don't realize, like me, that my kids are screaming in the background. Or they do realize it, but I forget to mute my microphone. Yeah. So everyone else is dealing with that. And they don't want to kick me from the group because they still want to communicate with me, but they just don't want to hear my, my screaming kids. Or you have that one friend who's saltier than hell and <laughs> that you just want to mute, 
Yeah, yeah just for a moment. Just yeah. for a moment. So then you can pop back later. But by the way, I have no idea what you said the last time. But <laughs> Every right. time they die, yeah, just turn on mute quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, I understand some of the, this functionality doesn't necessarily exist in other consoles. Like, it, it's a lot harder to adjust individual levels on people. Um, but if you're managing it through an app, it makes sense to do that. It, it's, it feels like a natural functionality. It, the fact you can't mute individual people, that really sucks. Um, even though right now it's just with your friends and they don't have, like, you know, like you're not getting with random people on Mario Kart 8 and then everyone's talking to each other. Uh, they don't have that kind of support right now, which some people could argue that's a missing feature, um, not having individual game lobbies for everyone. Uh, and I know some people argue, oh, it's to protect the children. I'm like, isn't that what the parental app is for? Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. They already have a solution. And by the way, you can't even use this app unless you're 13 and older. So we're talking about teenagers wow. and adults. <laughs> right. And maybe the parental well, app I'm just saying, legally, if, if kids if kids under 13 are using it, just like kids under 13 using Facebook, well, guess what? That's the, that's the fault of the parents. They're the ones that get legally in trouble when that kid does something they're not supposed to do. Right. The kid, the, the, I mean... Yay, kid! You're not legally responsible for anything before you're 13 on Facebook. Congrats. <laughs> right. Um, but it doesn't mean you should be posting porn because then your parents get arrested. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> woo, woo. But yeah, it's it's just a mess, a, a, a big, big mess. That I, I don't like. The, the only nice thing I will say about this app is how it handles feedback is pretty cool. Uh, there's a section in there when you go to settings that has a feedback option and through the app you can actually leave feedback to Nintendo about the app Um, and that's Hmm. like there's people I've seen I've had like a half dozen petitions sent to me hey can you share this petition can you talk about this petition I'm like why are we petitioning when Nintendo has already publicly stated several times they don't give a crap about petitions and they have a system that directly gives them feedback that they probably have a team of people reading yeah. Like you should yeah. use that direct feedback option. So like, if you guys don't like what they're doing, leave constructive feedback, by the way. Don't go into that feedback area and start swearing at them. They're going to ignore you. They're going to th- they're gonna automatically throw those ones away. As soon as they see a swear word, they're done. They're not listening to you. They, they, want, they want actual constructive feedback. So don't just be like, hey, this app sucks. Like That, that doesn't help them. Be right. like, hey, we feel like the app is missing these features. We would That's like really these cool. features because... Um, that's the way to do it. And I know some people who have done it and I highly suggest our audience, if you don't like the way the app is working right now, go to that feedback thing and suggest, because here's the thing, they still have five or so months to try to get it cleaned up before 2018, uh, or even longer. Cause they just said the launching in 2018. We don't know. Right. I mean, Could be we would love for it to be January 1st, but it's not, <laughs> they're going to keep pushing it back if there's problems. Um, so we need to give them this feedback right now. Cause if you want to argue, this is a beta program then fine, let's treat it like a beta program and tell Nintendo what we want. Um, yeah. And did, were you guys club Nintendo members? I was, yeah. Uh, okay, so I think you were at one point. Yeah. They had, you know, it was basically a giant survey program to earn your points, mm-hmm. answer these questions and give us the feedback we want. Yep. And so they took that away, and this sounds like sort of the replacement for that. Hey, we need a new approach to this. Why don't we make it easier, simpler? We're not asking them pointed questions. Just whatever you want to tell us. It's really easy to tell us. Just put it right here. Yeah, it, it's uh, that's the one thing I really like. Uh, now, obviously, we have to see something come of it. Um, that That's kind of the one thing, like, yeah, it's nice they have it, but if nothing actually changes, then, you, gotta, you know, if nothing changes between now and when they launch the paid version... Uh, besides adding features that are missing, you know, like direct messaging or whatever, uh, then you got to start looking at, okay, they're obviously not listening. (laughs) Um, So it's like, you just have that in there, but no one's checking the inbox. That's not cool. Um, And I I wish Nintendo, this is, this is something I I really want them to take from Discord. And there's other, there's other uh, apps out there that do this. Uh, They have a community where you can suggest a feature that the community then upvotes or downvotes. And the stuff that gets the most upvotes is the stuff that that company looks at adding to their app. It's like the Smash Bros. character vote. Yeah, like the Smash Bros. character vote. Except in this case, we're talking about base features for an app. So it's like, the, the, it's brilliant that Discord does it. Discord has added so much new functionality because of it. And they're, and they're looking into adding more. Like, actually, Discord working natively on Nintendo Switch is actually one of their highest voted things right now, and Discord's actually talking to Nintendo to try to make it happen. Now, is Nintendo going to let it happen? Mm-hmm. I would assume no, 
But <laughs> Nintendo's also letting PC streaming happen, so I yeah, right. I'm like, I believe uh, that though when it actually lands. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, we'll see if that if that ever comes <laughs> out. But they've been approved, anyways. We'll see. Right. It's I, what if you read that. What well, also being highlighted by Ars Techna is what Nintendo mentions in its support FAQ. Voice chat is unable to run in the background while using your phone for other purposes. Yep. We I know think that. I think it's because of the that Ars Technia or whatever the heck that they're using. Yeah. Well no, yeah, that that's what we were talking about before. You can't right. do anything else on your phone. Right. It literally hijacks your phone, period. Right. Um, so and, like, and I brought kind of up a scenario with that, that someone that someone someone was making fun of me for because I said uh, so I have to choose whether to hop out on my voice chat uh, to check a text message from my girlfriend about my children. Um, and, you know, and I brought up, you know, it could be a life or death situation. And someone's like, well, if it's a life or death situation, of course you just quit the voice chat and deal with it. I'm like, that, but well, you're missing my point. I wouldn't know if it's a life or death situation because I have to choose to read the text message to find out what's going on or voice chat. I can't do both. Right. Like, it could be nothing. It could just be a quick, she's just sending me a winky face. It means nothing. She's just being silly. She's just being playful. She's just telling me a joke. I can respond to that later. I'm in the middle of a match. Mm -hmm. But, nope, in the middle of the match, I got to go glance at because because she's the mother of my kids. I got to go glance at it to see if it's serious or not. Uh, and that's going to kick me out of the chat, which is dumb. And I know, like, I brought this up before. I never really finished the point about how some people say, oh, you're still kind of connected. People just can't hear each other or whatever. What's weird about it is when I watch the videos on it and people go into something else and then go back to the app, you could see it reloading and reinitializing and reconnecting you to the to the chat, meaning that in some ways it has disconnected you. Just because it shows you still in the lobby doesn't mean you didn't actually physically disconnect your chat connection. Because it definitely, it's yeah. not like you go back in and it instantly works again. No, it's reinitializing and reconnecting. So it, it's... <sighs> I was already against this app. Oh, yeah. Um, before, when they even mentioned it, I, I, I prayed it was just an option that it would be available natively. And in fact, if this becomes available natively on Switch, then I guess I'm not going to care how the phone part works because I'm just going to use it on Switch anyways. And I pray to God I can use it in the background of a game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't play a game. You can't play a game. You can voice chat or game. Can't do both. Yep. Um, but, but, I mean, whatever. That, I hope, happens someday. A lot of people hope that, but Nintendo is consistent. They said, no, phone app, phone app, phone app, phone app. And they said, you know, smart devices. And, and then I think what makes me upset about the phone app, besides the fact that it's the only option, is it feels so behind the times in 2017. If you're going to make it all phone app exclusive, then why don't you remember that this isn't a dedicated device to chat on? This is a smartphone. It's literally built, like I had someone who, oh, who multitasks on their phone. Who doesn't? <laughs> right. Who doesn't have text going, web browser, Facebook, all that stuff. You know, for Facebook. <laughs> like, yeah, like just, you know, switching between all the time. Who isn't doing that? I mean, that that's like the hallmark of a smart device. Yeah, if it like couldn't do that, you would just have individual devices to do all that stuff. So... That's what I feel weird about why it hijacks your phone right now. And, and my argument is, even if this is a beta, this is clearly not like consumer friendly. They should just not release it right now until they had it in a better place. Even if even if they plan to fix this and they know they're going to fix it, then don't release it now. And I know the people, well, what about voice chat in Splatoon 2? And we didn't have voice chat in Splatoon. We can wait. I bet you anything, though, that has a big impact on why they're releasing it now. And on the day of the re release of Splatoon, so they had as much time as possible. I suppose they released it like a week early. Yeah, but I don't. Uh, but the thing is, we I didn't mean, have right. voice. We didn't have voice chat in Splatoon, no. so it's like people aren't going to miss what they've never had if you just wait to yeah, release it till it's ready. But they would be mad because they did pester Nintendo so hard about it. Yeah, that, that's fine, and. Now you got it, and you're still using Discord. So what's the matter? <laughs> exactly. Like, Nintendo listened, kinda. And they it. Yeah, and 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 you're still gonna <laughs> use Discord. So I, they gave you an option. I mean, I don't mind a shitty option. They, they could have launched the companion part right now. Yeah. They can just say, "Look, we're still working on voice chat. We'll get back to that later." It'd be a nice data display app. Yeah, 
I, and just uses it as that. And the fact that while you're voice chatting, it uses that much battery. Uh, and I understand, we don't know what setting his brightness was at. We don't know how old his phone was. We don't know what model it was. There's battery issues, etc. But my experience is, when you have an app that's transferring a lot of data like that, um, that's where Spaceball is an example. That transfers oh, yeah. a lot of data back and forth between servers. It drains your battery the more data you're transferring back and forth. Mm -hmm. And because this is a multi-chat thing, it doesn't transfer data like a normal phone call does. It transfers, it's even got visual indicators and cues and, and pop-ups happening, to, you know, who's talking and floating heads mm -hmm. and all this stuff. So like, all this visual stuff going on, plus all the data being moved around, and that's going to drain your battery. It's going to be like those apps that when they're super high active apps, they drain your battery. Not like a Facebook feed where it loads one thing at once and then you get to read that so you get to a certain point and then it loads again. Mm -hmm. Like Facebook saves on data by just loading everything one time and then waiting. Right. Um, and to, and to see if you want to load anything else. Uh, this game can't preload like this because it's a live chat thing. Mm -hmm. So it drains battery. Uh, which I guess is to be expected. I expected that it was going to be a battery drainer. Um, the, a way to save on that is to be able to do it while it's in sleep mode. I can have my screen off. I don't need the visual indicators going nuts. So easy. So simple. Every other voice app in the world does it. Well, no, and I, I misspoke earlier. It, it uh, reading, the, uh, reading the article again, it said uh, power saving sleep mode. Yeah. So not, not the whole power save yeah. mode. Yeah. So it, it's... Uh... It's not a good situation. I I wish Nintendo would have just waited until they had something better. Because even if this is a beta and even if everything gets better, it's leaving a bad taste in people's mouths right now. Mm -hmm. And usually you don't get a second chance to make a first impression with something. And that's the sad thing is that the Switch has so many great things. It does. It does. Oh man, so many people think I'm hating on the Switch. My dude, I love Switch. It's been missing on how many consoles now? And uh, they had to screw it up again on a console that has a nice upward trajectory. Will it start to make the console falter now? Could it be something that drags it down? I don't know. I mean, ultimately, I say no because I think, and this is going to get to another topic later, that this is the Switch someday is going to be primarily viewed as a, a portable gaming device. Uh, some people already primarily do it as that. But there's, <laughs> still, yet to there, there, there's some, still plenty of people, though, that leave it on the dock. Like, all they play is in docked mode. Uh, but I think long haul, it'll be viewed as mostly a portable device that you can easily dock if you want. And it might even be sold eventually without the dock since they sell the dock separately already. Um, yeah. Just so they can come out, you know, and it, you know, they sell it at $200, you know, no dock. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's that's gonna hit. That's gonna be mass market, and I think they do that in a, a future topic we'll get to soon. But uh, it's yeah. when it hits to that point, I, yeah, voice chat's not gonna matter as much because how many people care about voice chatting on 3ds? 3ds even has a mic and can technically voice chat, but who does? Who voice chats on 3ds? Who cares about voice chatting on 3ds? Yeah. I mean, yeah. most people that care about voice chat are the kind of people that sit in front of their TV. Mm-hmm. Like, like, let's be honest, like, that is, oh, but portable, I'm like, but people don't really voice chat portable, because you're not playing online matches on your Switch on the bus. And, you know, another thing yeah. is, uh, I don't have a lot of adult friends that play 3DS games, especially competitive online 3DS games, yeah. where you want to chat with each other. You know, the scenarios are so limited where you would even be in a case where you'd want to voice chat on a 3DS. That's just not the same yeah. for... The switch we're talking about things like rocket league coming yeah you want some voice chat yeah you yeah. do it, it's just i'm hoping i mean i'm hopeful that nintendo gets it right but i hate it, it just hurts me as i said a first impression on something this big there's a bad taste in people's mouths it might not even matter if they get it right by the time they charge for it because most of the switch audience at that point will have at least tried it out when it wasn't that when it wasn't right and they might not give it a second chance um, in fact, they might not even be willing to pay for online play. It might even make... Look, I don't even want to play online anymore. That's how bad it put me off. Yeah. Um, and I'd hate to think... I mean, I've seen some people say that, well, I'm just never going to pay. I'm just not going to play online games on Switch. And it's like, <sighs> that's not good. Um, anyways. Well, I got one last thing. Sure. Too. Um, how about the people... How about, like, actual iPhone users who have to have even more cords and more dongles and more... Stuff because iPhone 7, iPhone 7. Yes. to be specific, yes. right? They're, they might be fixing it on iPhone 8, but 
when they took away the which, by the way, they're skipping 7S this year. They're going straight to 8 because it's an anniversary. So. Oh, okay. Cool. But, yeah. How about those people? I feel bad for those people. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I skipped the 7. I'm hoping the 8 has the headphone jet back. Yeah. Um, uh, if it doesn't, then I would like to see them include the AirPods in with it. Yeah. Right. If they include it in with it, then okay. Um Anyways, and I know you can use other Bluetooth headsets. With yeah, this right, right, right. But, I mean, but... people like people like throwing just those cheap... I mean, ninety percent of headphones out there aren't Bluetooth and use the same audio jack side. Right. Anyways, but yeah.